All right. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is Mark Fenton, Senior Mentor with Sheridan Mentoring, and uh, we are going to go over the time bomb butterfly today. I wrote an article on the time bomb butterfly that was published in the um, March issue, at least the March print issue, I believe it was, of Modern Trader Magazine. So you can find that. It's on page 14, a little bio of me on page 78. You can find this article that I have on my screen. Now you can also get it digitally if you sign up for uh, the magazine there online. That's Modern Trader Magazine. I uh, know I don't have a link, so you'll have to sign up with Modern Trader Magazine, and then you can get a link uh, for this PDF. I believe for the uh, electronic version, I'm, don't quote me on this, but I believe it's free. So uh, you can sign up for Modern Trader. You can find this article on the Time Bomb Butterfly. And what it is, it's a butterfly that's placed a little further out of the money than where we currently are looking for direction, but we're going to, before I get into the time bomb, I want to go over the butterfly a little bit. And the reason I want to go over the butterfly, uh, of course, I want everybody to understand it. And I found, I was teaching a futures class uh, here, I don't know, last fall, I guess it was, and I found that people, I didn't really fully understand the butterfly. People could put it on but I don't think they were fully aware of how all the components were working. They would just put it on, and as you can see here in our graph, I think people who are familiar with butterflies know that if you're anywhere inside of this graph, above the zero line and inside these green lines, then on expiration day, you'd be profitable. And in fact, you can be profitable, of course, significantly before then also. So I think everybody understands that, but the problem was getting them to understand the individual components. So I want to go over that um, before uh, we get into the time bomb itself, and I think you'll get a lot more out of the time bomb butterfly if you, re if you really think about what's going on in a butterfly. So here I'm um, using the TD Ameritrader Thinkorswim Analyze screen here, and um, I have a, an entire butterfly down here, uh, one, two, one, but instead what I've done also is I've loaded just its components, which is in Apple, and uh, it is out in March before expiration. I think that was like 16 days out. I'm, I'm not recommending a trade here. I'm just using this as an example. Um, so what it was was buying the 100 call, selling two 105 calls, and then buying a 110 call. And that's essentially what this 100-105 butterfly, it's the same thing it's doing. If you bought them all together, if you bought the 100 and the 110 and you sold the two 105s all together, it'd be around $2. But if you look at the individual components, you can see that the 100 is currently trading around $3.05. The 105 call is 52 cents, and the OA call is $1.10. And currently, we're trading at 102.21-ish. In that area, as Apple bounces around. And as we can see here by this graph, if you put your mouse right on that line where we're trading, and then you look down over here while we're doing that, that if we finished here, if Apple finished here at expiration and we had on this butterfly, we'd make like 24, 25 bucks, right? Um, hey, thanks, John. I didn't even know you could see it online there. Thank you. <laughs> I thought you had to sign up. My mistake. Um, but um, currently it's trading at 305. Now, this is a 100 call. And Apple's trading at 102.25. Can anybody tell me how much intrinsic value that this this call option has? Intrinsic value, real value. How much does it have? A 100 call with Apple trading at around 102 and a quarter. I'm seeing if anybody put it in the chat feature. No answers? 
You got to put it in the chat feature, not question it. Oh, there you go. Very good. All right, two dollars twenty-five cents. That's correct because it has real value because it's a one hundred call, which means anything above a hundred, you could exercise and uh, you could have Apple at that price. And if Apple's trading at one hundred two and a quarter, well, then it has two dollars twenty-five cents of intrinsic or real value. What about the time value? If it has two dollars and twenty-five cents of real value and the options trading at three hundred five. What's the time value, our extrinsic value? Well, it would be 305 minus 225, or about 80 cents, wouldn't it? Exactly. You guys are fast on the uptake. So time value is what? That's, that's the price you're paying to have the right to buy or sell something at a certain price at a future date. And the further you are from that future date, or the longer that right exists, the more time value it has. So if we went, this is an option that expires, we say in 16 days. If we went to an option, say, in June, you'd have a lot more time value, wouldn't you? The intrinsic or real value would be the same. It'd still be around two and a quarter. But the time value would be much higher. We can just take a quick look at that. What if we went out to June and we looked at a 100 call and we would see that's $6.40 roughly, so it would have a lot more time value. So the further you are from expiration, the more time value you have, and that decays over time. But options, they don't, they don't decay in a linear fashion. They don't just decay, decay, decay. Options decay more towards the end of their life. They just really tend to plunge at the end, if you're in an option trade, let's say a monthly 30, 40 days out, you'll really notice that the theta begins to burn off in, in those options at around a week and a half, two weeks before expiration. It starts to really take off. All right, so we've established the intrinsic and extrinsic value. So you're hoping to buy this and what would be the most ideal price? Well, if it closed at 105, that's where you could make your most money on expiration. You could make, in this case, $293 profit on expiration if it closed at 105. But why would you make the most amount of money there? Well, you'd make the most amount of money there because your 100 call would have as much value that it could have without starting to give it away. Remember, we sold two, two, excuse me, two 105 calls. So when it goes past 105, the calls we sold are in the money. So those begin to count against us because we sold someone the right to buy Apple at 105. So we would like it to end at about 105. That means we have, our option has its full value, the most value it could get without starting to be penalized by having to also cover two short calls. And then eventually, because of those two short calls, you would eventually really begin to lose money. So we end up buying another long out here at 110 to really give us a floor. So if this trade costs us about $2 to buy, the most amount of money you could lose is $200, right? So if you pay $200 for this all called butterfly, world comes to an end, the most you could lose would be $200, what you paid for it, because it's balanced out at $200. Now, I say that, but I do wanna say one thing anecdotally, and that is I have seen a person lose more money in a butterfly than they would have lost at expiration. Now, how do you think they did that? How did you lose more than you could ever lose if you just held it till expiration and it, and it had the worst result at expiration? Maybe it went to 150 or something. Well, this what happened was during the flash crash, those of you who might remember that, I think it was like 2011, I'm guessing. Might have been 10, I can't remember. And um, they, during the flash crash, panicked and sold a butterfly 
uh, on your broker's platform, they sold at the market. And when you sell something or buy anything at the market, you never really want to do that in option trades at all, in option spread trades, because the bid and ask is wide and you're at the mercy of whatever the market maker can really get away with saying you sold or bought it for. So he got a fill, thank you, Glenn, he got a fill that was worse than if he'd held it to, till expiration. And it, the whole thing, you know, the worst, the worst happened. So it's like he was in this, he could have lost $200 of expiration. He got a market order and got filled at like, sold it for, you know, uh, where he lost 225 or $230. I don't remember. So don't ever use market orders, right, when you're doing spread trades. That's not good at all. Now, uh, I'm going to probably answer a lot of questions towards the end. I'm going to answer a few here. I'll just go back and look, and there's not many. I'll pick up a few here. Uh, this trade would be, yes, you would buy this trade at a debit, buy it at a debit of $1.99, currently $2, kind of bouncing around. Of course, we know that means it's one. that's per option, so that would be. $200 since these contracts have 100 shares in them, right? So you'd be buying it. And I suppose, yes, you probably could lose more than that if you if you sold, at the end of it, you sold your debit spread and bought your credit spread, which is really what this butterfly is. Your long one, short one, short one, long one. It's sort of like two verticals, one credit, one debit that meet in the center, right? And you could lose even more if you uh, legged out of it and got poor pricing also, right? I think in a panic situation, honestly, uh, if you couldn't get a decent fill, you know, you know, maybe within 20, 30 cents of the mid in a panic, I think that you just let that panic pass and let it work. See if it comes back or you might have end up taking the full loss. But a lot of times, if you know, if people watch the market, you know, if it goes up or it goes down, it goes up and down, the market kind of moves around. And what happens one day, you know, a lot of times, maybe even the next day or within the next week, it might come a little more in your favor. So you would probably want to just stick with that trade. You could in a panic situation, of course, let's say it's going down. You could buy a put, just a single put to protect yourself some. Be careful, and the flash crash people did that and they got they got hurt, right? Because it went down and then it just sprung right back up. But that's the kind of thing you could do. All right, so we know we got this intrinsic value and extrinsic value of the 100 call. So we know that our best thing that could happen is end at 105 or 100 call is worth the most it can be without being starting to take heat uh, from the 105 shorts. The 105 shorts right now are 52 cents. Is that intrinsic or extrinsic? Just going to ask one more time. Somebody new answered me. Is that intrinsic or extrinsic value, that 52 cents, or is it both? Extrinsic, exactly. So right now, the 105s are worth 52 cents, but in reality, they're worth nothing, right, if, if we were at expiration. But since they have time value, and there's time for Apple to get above 105, then it works for you. So you'd be buying one $3 call, selling two 50-cent calls, and then buying two eight cent call or one eight cent call is what it would come down to. Okay. So that's the components of a butterfly and how a butterfly works. Any questions on that? I'll stop here because you really need to understand what we're doing here with the butterfly. You need to understand why it works. All right. Looks like we got a pretty thorough understanding. So now let's let's uh, let's take a look at what we call the time bomb butterfly. And for that, I'll go ahead and I'm going to get rid of these single options since now we know about the individual components and we know that this two dollars is what happens if you buy one, sell two, buy one of this particular spread. So the time bomb butterfly 
involves, instead of being right at the money, it involves leading it a little bit, usually even more than this. So if we started this trade right here, the price is right here, and we put this trade on, would we be bullish or bearish? What do you think? We'd be bullish, right? Because we're thinking that Apple could run up, but we're not, obviously we're not too afraid it's gonna go down, right? But the time bomb usually is even further out of the money. And let me just give an example of why you might do that. Sometimes, uh, a lot of times you can do these during earnings. Let's say you expected, you know, Apple's at 102 and that they had earnings tonight. You can really put these to use because you can see, uh, you can uh, put up a fly above and a below it, and if Apple runs either way, you make money. Let me just give you an example. So sometimes what we do, now this won't be very graphic at this point because earnings aren't coming here, but what you can do at earnings time is you can take the at the money call and put. So we're trading about 102. So if we look at the at the money call, let's just say it's trading at about, the mid price is about 205. And the at the money put over here is trading at about 182, or we'll just say 180. So 180 plus 205, that would be 305 and 80, that would be 385. So what the market makers are saying, even in this instance, is they don't think that, that Apple, between now and expiration day of April 1 there on the 18th, I mean, excuse me, 18 days from now, they don't think Apple's going to move more than about $3.85. You add the at the money call and at the money put mid prices together to get that number. And why is that? Well, market makers don't want you to be able to buy the straddle and make money. They don't want you to go to 102 and buy the straddle which is a 102 call and a 102 put. See, it's trading at about 390. But they don't want you to be able to do that and make money, right? So what they do is price it so Apple's really got to move. It's got to move more than $3.90 in one of these directions by exp on expiration for you to make more, for you to make money. If it moves less than $3.90 on expiration day, you lose. You'd be here losing money different degrees depending on how far it went. But the only way you're gonna make money is if it goes out in here and goes beyond that 390. So that's a way of telling it. And at the earnings, if Apple was having earnings, well, this number might even be $10 because the volatility be higher. So the inflation, the, the option prices would be inflated. So you might see $10 so you know that the market makers feel that Apple could move $10 in either direction with these earnings. Now they're not saying, this, just to be clear, it's just like here, even though it's 390, they're not saying it's going to move 390. They're saying that they they don't believe it's gonna move more than 390. And you can find a lot of times, um, particularly in earnings, that the market makers are wrong and it can move more. I remember an Amazon one where I think the straddle was um, $30 and it moved like 60, you know? So it, it certainly can happen. And if, if this was earning time and it was $10, this number, the straddle for the at the money uh, call and put options, you know, for Apple, then, you know, you're going to need it to move what, 11 or 12 for you to make any money at all, right? So that's a way of figuring out where you want our butterfly to be. So let's suppose that we're real Apple bears. And we believe Apple's gonna move this 390, maybe even $4 by this time this expires in a couple of weeks. So if we thought that, and we're at 102 and we think, hey, we're gonna be in the 98 area, here's what you could do. Since it's below where we're trading, I would use a put because I'll show you. Let me construct it and we'll talk about it. And here's one way you could do it. You could buy the 100. And if you thought we were going to be at 98, sell the 98. And then buy, we'll just do equidistant ones, 198. 
96. All right. So if we're right, let's take a look. And Apple runs down, we can make good money. Now look at this. We could put this trade on for about 20 cents or $20 right now because it's out of the money. Now if Apple runs down, I mean, if we were right and it was at 98, look at it, we could make $178 for every $20 spread we put on. So what is that, like a uh, eight times, you know, <laughs> the amount of money you have in a trade, I mean, an eight-bagger? So that's what I like about these time bomb butterflies is the reward can be exponential. And if you put them on a little further out here, the risk isn't very high. So you're risking... $20 to make 180-ish, right? So, and we call it a time bomb one because it's out further out and kind of, you might say, blows up if the price can get into this uh, tent. Now, you'll notice that if I put this on right now, even if Apple ran down a dollar or two tomorrow, I could be up money tomorrow, maybe even 10% or 50%, something um, it pays that 178, it, well, it was, now it's 167, it was bouncing. But you're going to make the most amount of money if you're at $98, right? I'm trying to get my mouth. See, if you're at $98, it's going to pay, uh, if you look over here when I put my mouse there, it's going to pay like 180 bucks if we're at $98, okay? All right, but even before then, let's say we put it on right now and Apple runs down a dollar tomorrow. You could be up already. Just because those va the value of the options that you bought and sold, that fly becomes more valuable. As it gets closer to the money, it's worth more. Now, it could even blow through and look, you can make money. And this goes on for a while if we just look at time decay. Let's say it was, you know, a week from today. And you could be up pretty good money if we could just be inside this tent. If you were right, and Apple ran down this purple line as the daily line. So um, that just shows you how much money you can make in these. Now, if it goes the other way, well, you could lose 20 bucks. Now, that's one of the reasons that I picked puts. Because, you see, if Apple really went down and went down past 98, well, you're on, you're on the hook for these. You could close the trade, but you're on the hook for two shorts or 200 short shares at 98. And if you lingered in here towards the end of the expiration period, you could even be exercised, right? So if Apple ran down here, you could be exercised if you don't close this trade because you would be short a couple at 98. Now, you could, of course, exercise your own and balance that all out, but that's kind of a hassle. So it's good if you if you can to close these and don't get exercise. And the reason I like to use puts is I don't even have to worry about it unless it comes down into my zone. For instance, what if I'm really wrong and Apple just rockets upwards? Okay, I'm not on the hook for anything. I can close this if I want, or I could leave it on and let it work and just let it expire worthless. I lose 20 bucks, but I don't pay any brokerage fees to close it. You could do that if it ran up because you're not on the hook for anything. Not like if it ran down and went beyond your butterfly or even beyond 98, or you begin to be responsible for those two shorts that you sold. And yes, Gary, I'm, you're about ready. You were taking my next point, right? Let's suppose that you, you thought Apple might move $4 in these next couple of weeks, but you didn't know which way. You just thought it would move it. All right, $20, I'll put one on down here. But if I thought four bucks, well, maybe I think 106. So I could go over here to 106. And on that side, what do you think I'd use, puts or calls? Well, I'd use calls, right? For the same reason that I use puts on the other. If it doesn't go my way, I'm only on the hook for one side. And this I'll be on the hook for two sides, but I also make money on two sides. So I could do the, let's just say, I like those $2 wide spreads, for instance, if you did. So you do 104, 106, 108. Look, take a look at this. 
Is that in the same period? Oops, I blew it, folks. I put that in the wrong period. Hold on. Let me put that in the right period. That was March 4. There we go. Okay. <laughs> See, it's very careful to make sure you got the right period. So look at this. Now, we could put on these. That doesn't seem right. Okay, yeah. 27 cents and 19 cents. So we'd have about a little less than 50 bucks in this trade. And if it ran up into our call fly, we could make over 100. Depends, different amounts from here to here. It ran down into our put fly, we could, of course, make money. But if it ran beyond our call fly or beyond our put fly or stayed here in the center, of course, we could lose 50 bucks if we don't exit the trades sooner. And you could do this with earnings. This is when this is really handy at earnings because you might not really have an opinion because you don't know what Apple's earnings are going to be. It could be good. They could be bad. So you, you can kind of cover it in both directions. Whoops. So that's how you can play earnings or any kind of a directional move with a stock. If you have an opinion on a stock, you all you have to do to come up with this is your own opinion. You could go, oh, I'm just going to go to the charts, and I think Apple could be here 98 bucks in two weeks or $106 in two weeks. Or you might think something longer term. What if you thought, all right, I'm going to go to the chart. I'm just kind of going through the channels here. Things you could do, not saying, you know, these are things I think, but I'm just showing things to do with your own opinion. Because the time bomb butterfly, absolutely essential. You have to have an opinion, right? That you have to have an opinion on how much it may move or which way it may move, right, or both. So let's suppose I'm here, and I go, you know what, I don't, you know, as we get into the second half of the year, I think yeah, it's going to be dark for Apple. Let's suppose a person thought that. So you could say, hey, you know, I think we could revisit these lows, 92. I think we could be there in June, maybe even lower. So you could do things like, let's just see what that would cost. What if we went out to June at center to fly at 92? Just a normal June expiration. Uh, I think that's it right here. And we go out there and we go, okay, I'm going to center one at, well, you can't get 92, well, 92 and a half, all right? And then there's other halves around it. Let's just use 90. Makes it a lot simpler. So we'll buy a put fly at 90. We'll do it once. And let's suppose we think it's going to end at 90. We, we're going to do two-point wide spreads. I'm going to talk about spread width here in a second. So another two-point wide, 92 long, 90 short, 88 long. Now, if we did that, look what we'd pay. Oh, it's not traded. But it would be cheap if you could get it, believe me. All right? Uh, here, let's do this. Let's do it 95. This will be traded. Some of these dollar strikes don't come into being until later. So we could even do, look at this, we could do a 95, 90, 85, look at this, 35 cents. And if we're right, and out here in June, Apple's down here trading below 94 and above 86-ish, you could really make some dough in a matter of fact. Of course, you could make money along the way. And because it decays slowly, you don't even really lose money too quickly. Look at the theta. It's three dollars or three cents a, a day of theta is all you've got working. That's pretty low. And if we started to move down earlier, of course you can make money. But see, what you can do is you can buy these anywhere, far out in time, far out in price, get them cheaply. And if you're right, oh, am I in 2017? Oh, that's what I get for thinking. All right, well we'll go to. Uh, and 16. There you go. It's still cheap, 46 cents. And, uh, of course, we can make money along the way, make a lot of money out here. We could have like a 10-bagger, right? <laughs> we paid 46 cents. We could be close to having 10 times our money if we were in the peak. So, yeah, I'm sorry I didn't look at it sooner. Anyway. So, by the way, you could go to June 2017 if that's when you wanted to make your opinion. You'd just be holding it a long time, wouldn't you? <laughs> 
But you could do any period you want. You could do next month. You could do next week. You could do this Friday. You know, sometimes people like to do things. Uh, you may have heard of the term pinning. And pinning is where you try to uh, sell a bu buy a butterfly that peaks or sell one if it's ironed. It peaks right at where it expires. So what if you were hoping for, uh, for Apple to expire right at 103? You were hoping it's going to go up a little here. And it, on expiration, here in just a few days, hang on here. Let's go back over to here. Four days from now, you're hoping for Apple to close at 103. You could do calls, puts. On that one, it, you, you probably could really pick either way because you're going to be in it pretty late. Uh, so you got to be a little careful with this. But if you did it with calls, you know, let's just say we did it one time. And I thought it was going to close at 102. I might even just do a dollar wide, 102, 103, 104, 18 cents. And if Apple closes on expiration, or maybe that afternoon you might close it, you can make, you know, three times your money, right? So you could use this for pinning type behavior if you thought too. So what's a time bomb fly? Well, it's further out in time, whatever period, four days to four months or a year, and further out in price in a direction you think it's going to go. Now, a little bit about wing width. You say, Mark, why did you pick two-point wide wings? Well, the wider the wings you have, the more money this trade costs. All right, it's 20 cents if I do it two points wide, this put spread. If I go ahead and do it three points wide, which should mean I do the 95, one, yeah, 101, 98, 95, it's twice as much just to go one point wider. But what do I get for my money? Well, I get more width, right? So the choice is yours. The wider your fly is, the more room you have for your fly to work. But the wider your fly is, the more money your fly costs you. Of course, the more narrow your fly, the less room it has to work, but it is cheaper, right? So you decide how much wing width you're willing to pay for, essentially. Bill says, with a 1 to 10 ratio, it seems to me that putting on a 4 fly spaced around the current price would certainly put odds in my favor. Yeah, I mean, you could put these, you could try to space them around. Uh, depends on where you want. You could always, you know, butterflies, of course, can be done at the money. But the topic today was this speculative play, the time bomb butterfly, where you're picking direction. But certainly you could pick your direction could be it's not going to go anywhere, and, of course, you put the fly on at the money. Now, with these, sometimes you hear in our community about adjusting trades or trying to repair them. I don't normally try to repair these trades. I put these trades on cheap. This isn't the milk money, so don't do this with money. You should do this with money you're willing to lose all of, because, really, if you buy this, Apple could run up tomorrow, and you'd get little or you might get a little of your money back. But you should be prepared to lose most or all of the money that you put in a time bomb butterfly. It's not like, say, an iron condor where, you know, you might be able to take it and uh, not lose all your money, has some value or whatever. And a, a fly, if it runs against you, you know, the wrong way, a time bomb fly, you could just lose all your money, particularly, particularly in earnings, right? Let's suppose I put on a put fly because I think Apple's going down, it goes to the moon higher. Well, I put flies worthless, and you'll, it'll have no value the day after earnings. You did it the same week, which is what I would be doing. If Apple had earnings today, I'd be doing this Friday's option. You want to get the closest option expiration period to where the earnings are so that whatever you buy this butterfly, because these butterflies you can see make their most money if they're in here towards expiration. So if expiration is this Friday and I buy today's, it's going to be in. If it gets in here, I'm going to make good money. So that's why we'd want to do that with our earnings plays. You'd want to use the closest expir expiration that you could so you can get into meat of that fly where everything's decaying rapidly and uh, make your most money. Now, I did this with Apple, but you can also do things like this with the SPX, right? The SPX, you could... Um, 
what, that would be a more of a way to pick general market direction, right? Where maybe you think that the SPX for the market in general maybe is in trouble or whatever. Maybe you think it's going to revisit its lows. You know, maybe you're a real bear and you think, you know, over the next month or two, we're going to go all the way back down and revisit here. Or, you know, even more reasonable probably, you know, we'd revisit recent support at 1940-ish, right? There's some support there. So let's take a look at that. What if we thought over the next month that um, SPX, say 31 days from now, could be around 1940? Look how cheaply you can put these trades on. Even in, and the SPX is a pretty large instrument, right? So we'd buy puts, remember, because we think it's going down and we don't want to be in the money on anything unless we're making money with it. So we go to butterfly, dial this down to one. And you can do however many, you know, the wing width and how many contracts you do, that's up to you. The more contracts you do, the more money it costs. Also, the more money you can make or lose. And of course, the wider the wing size I already covered, the more money it costs and the more room you have for it to work. So let's suppose I even did 10 point wide. I did a 1950, 1940, 1930. And if I'm right, and, and SPX is in here, that trade would cost me, can you believe that? About $25. And if we were right, and SPX was somewhere roughly between 1930 and 1950, we could make some money, especially right around that sweet spot. And you know, as we get closer to expiration, let's take a quick look at that. What if we were out here? See, this is about the 15th. What if like the Thursday, about eight days before, or even this Wednesday, nine, about nine days before expiration, you could be up, you could be about double your money, right? About $50 gain if we were in here even 10 days before expiration. So it's a pretty effective um, way at times to do this, and it's definitely high reward, very low risk, this particular trade. Yeah, bet mo, win mo, there you go. Um, but uh, that's the time bomb butterfly. Out in time, out in price, you could use it for general market direction or with something like SPX or RUD or NDX or whatever you want to use. And you could use it around earnings with individual stocks or, or maybe any what you call binomial event in a stock where maybe they're expecting merger news or maybe it's a drug company expecting an approval or not or, and of course earnings. So any questions on the time bomb butterfly? So start typing them in there. I'll give you guys time if you're like me, it takes you a while, I understand that. As I said, I don't do any adjustments with these. I just use, I do them because they're out of the money. I I do them at a rate that's cheap enough for me that I'm willing to risk it. Tom W says, would you would placing these double time bomb butterflies say each week as a strategy work through the year? Any adjustment? I don't know. I've never really looked at, at it on a yearly basis. Uh, might be interesting to test. I would say that if you some back testing software, you might want to do that. Ken says, would you use this as a hedge against a long portfolio or use butterflies closer at the money? You know what? That That is another use. Thank you for bringing that up. You could use this as a hedge also. Let's suppose you held a basket of stocks that were in the S&P 500 and you just wanted a little protection. You could go out here and buy these put spreads. You might even, you could, however much protection you think you need and however much protection you want to pay for, it's sort of like, you know, protecting your car. I mean, you can buy different levels of protection, right? So that's up to you. The more protection you have, the more money it costs. It'd be the same with this butterfly. But you could, you know, if you're if the portfolio, if we really had a big down move, you'd get some support to your overall portfolio. You could hedge it, yes. Excellent point. Uh, yeah, they're having an announcement on the 24th. I don't know anything about that announcement, Larry. You'd have to fill me in on your opinion or whatever. Okay, uh, Steve says, which one of the Greeks should we pay the most attention to when initiating a time bomb butterfly? Is it gamma? I don't pay attention to any of them, right? 
I'm paying attention to price. I'm paying attention to where this price, where I think it's going to go. I'm paying no regard to the Greeks. Now that's not usual in an options trade, I agree with you, but we're really concerned here with where's something gonna go price-wise and when's it gonna get there time-wise. So we don't need to use the Greeks for that. I have never done that, uh, Milo, no. Um, all right, Glenn Thompson says, you know your time, all that is left is price. That's correct, Glenn's spot on there. All right, I'm waiting to see if there's any more questions. And uh, like I said, it's a fun strategy to try at earnings, try it cheap, and other other times, anytime you want, you think you can pick a direction. And it's you know, however much direction you want. You might think something's going a couple bucks, 10 bucks. You can use that market maker, adding the, at the money, put call together, see where they think it might be by that expiration. So you got alternatives. All right, well, I'll see if there's any more. Uh, how long do you usually hold these options until expiration? A few days before. I usually like to take them off before, a day or two before, Andy. I don't really want to get exercised if I can avoid it. And if they happen to be where I'm short in the money, that can be a problem, yeah, right? So let's not do that uh, if we can. Let's, let's just take them off. When should you take off of going against you? That's up to you, like I said. Um, in these, I tend to just let them work. But if you said, okay, I put this on an Apple and ran up and it's not working, maybe Apple went up two bucks tomorrow, or SBX went up tomorrow to 1950 after you put this on, you go, okay, well, I got uh, $80 here. Maybe I can at least get half of it back. You, it's up to you. That's all up to you. Or you can let it all work. You're, it's totally up to you. Has anyone ever bought a long-term butterfly selling something to finance it? Well, that's something, you know, there's yeah, there's all different ways to skin a cat, Steve, for sure. Uh, you, you can do this. Um, that's a good question. All right, well, I'll give you one more chance here to ask any questions that you have. And I'm gonna have John come back on here. And he wants to talk to you a little bit. At what price is the SDX going to open this Friday? <laughs> I do not know. I wish I knew oh, that here. Come on, I mean, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I wish I did. All right. Um, I was just thinking while Mark was talking here, he actually did a uh, a course uh, that we just wrapped up um, a handful of weeks ago on earnings. And uh, the next earnings cycle is actually coming around next month. Um, and Mark actually did a, a presentation on the time bomb butterfly in that class where he expounded kind of even more than he did today. And he used a couple different examples. I think he put on a, an SPX trade and a Facebook trade using this time bomb butterfly. Uh, so what I wanted to do was actually just, uh, first of all, let you guys know that um, Dan has a brand new class that he will be Starting this Wednesday, in fact, let me let me share this with you guys so you can see this. Dan's got a, a brand new class that he'll be starting on Wednesday, and you can um, click on this link here to learn more about it. It's a new weekly options for income course. So I thought uh, if there was any of you out there that were interested in, in some of the courses that Dan and Mark and we have another mentor, Jay Bailey, they all three contribute to these courses. Uh, if you guys were interested, both courses are $297 on their own. Uh, that would be $594. But if it was something that uh, you were thinking about jumping in or you've done a couple of our classes, um, we'd be willing to, uh, to as, as uh, gratitude for you guys taking some time to listen to Mark today, uh, we'd be willing to give you guys 25% off uh, buying those two classes together. So you could save $147 now if you were interested in this weekly options for income class as well as the earnings class that we just wrapped up. And you, know, you can actually learn more about those courses uh, right on our online options course page. And I'll, I'll throw a couple links in here 
as well for you guys. And if you have any questions, go ahead and throw them in the chat. If you'd like to have uh, my associate Mike here actually give you a call to get you signed up for that, you can just put your number in the private chat box, and I will be happy to have him give you a shout in the next few minutes. If you wanted to take advantage of 25% off two of our classes together. Let's see if there's any other questions in here for you, Mark. There was one here, yes. SPX is cast settled. You wouldn't have to, no problem with exercising SPX. That's correct, Wayne. Just those, those pesky stocks do that to you. Uh, the OEX, which I don't use as an index, uh, that, that was also you could be exercised in, but mainly it's the ETFs and stocks that exercise you. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys coming out and uh, listen to this. Hope you take advantage of uh, Johnny's offer there on those two courses. And believe me, there's a lot more than Time Bomb Butterflies in that earnings course, Dan. Dissects all the different ways you can play earnings, or even price moves in general. And uh, that's, that's a great course, and it's a, that's a great value, those two things together. But that's all I have for today, John. All right. Bye-bye. Have a good one.